everything is some way made so that it is a symbol. <laughs> Among our people, everything that we have in the ceremonies and the songs, the prayers, and in life, actually, everything is some way made so that it is a symbol. And it is that uh, it could be living creatures or it could be something that we uh, chisel into rock or something that we would put into a uh, dry painting or ceremonial sand painting. But it is that there are symbols. And they say, in the language of our people, which means it is to cause you to think. It is to help you remember. It is that it has a lot of history and stories attached to it. And then finally, it is that it is there so that it can be used to make plans for your future. So the symbols are very important to our people, and there are many. And probably in the outside world, non Dene people, they also have a lot of, of symbols. And symbols are things that probably various organizations and that, especially in Christianity, you have the crucifix and that, that has a lot of uh, teachings and symbols involved with that. But also something that uh, people uh, kind of forget are statues and monuments. These are things that we can look at and actually they have stories and history and it is uh, very necessary to learn what those symbols are and what those uh, represent. And so in the traditional teaching of our people, there are so many things that uh, are the symbols. And one of the uh, first one, of course, is the uh, symbol for life. And when we talk about life, we talk about life on the surface of, of Mother Earth. And the, uh, the way that we do that, of course, is the uh, clockwise spiral. So it's in the idea that the spiral is up on top of our head, on our fingertips. And also we have it some symbolized in the way the baskets are woven and the way that we do our, the construction of our homes, the hogan, the female hogan especially. And then also the uh, other ceremonies and that that are involved with the coming of age for the boy and the coming of age for the girl. Especially when you look at the uh, coming of age ceremony for the girl, they have a cake that they have to bake, which is uh, baked in the ground. And uh, when you lay out the, uh, the corn husk and that, it has to be in that spiral. And the uh, other things that are symbolic and so very necessary part of the ceremony of a young woman becoming a woman is very important. There's a lot of symbolism involved in the uh, ceremony to, uh, for the girls coming of age ceremony and also the ceremony for the boy uh, coming of age. So there are symbols in all of these ceremonies and that. But the uh, other things in that that we can uh, look at is the, uh, the horned toad. And we call the horned toad Che or Che, which means grandfather. And so it is that uh, he's a symbol of protection. If you ever, if when you look at a horned toad, he has all these spikes on his body, and these spikes are considered as uh, points of uh, arrows that uh, protect you. And so when you see a horned toad, he's down close to Mother Earth. And uh, so if he will allow you to pick him up, you take the horned toad and you bless yourself that you will have protection for your mind and for your your feelings inside and for your spirit that you have protection for your physical self and so it is that dear, when you offer that type of prayer he is symbolic of this protection that he that he has and he is also regarded in, as a che he's uh, considered to have very close co contact with the uh, the holy people so when you use him as a symbol to say holy people help me to protect my mind, help me to protect my emotion, help me to protect my spirit, and help me to protect my physical self. That's the way the horned toad is, uh, is used as a great symbol. The teachings actually are very important to know and the correct way to refer to them and why we, we refer to them as we do. And it even creates funny stories about some young children and that they were taught, you know, that now showing it's easy and you say, which is to say that the horned toad is your grandfather. So one day they went running home to grandma and they said, Grandma, 
Grandpa got run over. And so she was really quite uh, surprised. And she said, show me, where? Where did Grandpa get run over? And so she went running over there, and the, and the little kids took her to the road, and there was the, the horn toad that had been had the misfortune of uh, ending up under the, the wheel of a vehicle. And uh, so that's kind of a, supposed to be humorous. But anyway, that's uh, the way that people learn of the various things that we have as symbols. The uh, other one is uh, the turquoise or any of the sacred stones, the black jet and the shell and the uh, a coral. And of course, the turquoise is so very much a, a symbol of the idea that we came from a previous world and we came before we came into this world, and we knew that we came from the presence of the holy people. And so it's very important to know that we came from among them. And it is that uh, when we wear the turquoise, that it is that we let the holy people know we know where we came from. And the other thing is sometimes, you know, we have earrings that are made out of turquoise. And the turquoise by near the ear is symbolic of not letting uh, things that are ugly and that get into your... You're thinking by hearing it. Filter out the things that are not good, things that would be offensive to you. Don't listen to the stuff that are ugly. Listen to good music and listen to the good teachings and the good information. And so that's why you wear the turquoise on the ears. The symbolisms in that that we have in all of the different things, as I mentioned, the ceremonies, the songs, the prayers, the way that we do everyday things, and the, the things that we have in our in our hogan, the stirring stick, the fire poker, and even the fire itself. They are symbols of the way that we do things. And then, of course, the one that's very important is that, uh, that of the corn pollen. The corn pollen is a symbol of our communication line to the holy people. We always mention the uh, corn pollen path. And uh, other people have always wanted to have specific information and I would like to just kind of say that you don't need to be told every little tiny thing. You have to watch, observe, and use some common sense to understand the teachings of our people. When we say that you take the corn pollen and you sprinkle it to the east, that means that we came from the east by the holy people bringing us here. We want to return to the holy people, and they brought us from the east, so we want to return to in that direction. So the corn pollen path is in that direction. The corn pollen path is the prayer. Prayer is very important. So the Zanei which is the teachings of our people, are that you must have a prayer at all times, and all things that you do, the things that you think, even the things that you eat, and the places that you walk, and the things that you touch, these are the things that are so very important to the uh, the ne, and so it's symbolized by the corn pollen. And the corn pollen, of course, everything is reproduced by some form of pollen, and it is mostly yellow. So this is the yellow world, the third world, and so there's a lot of symbolism in that associated with the uh, the teachings of the corn pollen path. And again, everything is a symbol to help us think, to help us remember, and to know that there are a lot of teachings associated with these symbols, and of course to help us plan our lives and our daily activity and everything that we do. And those are the things that we are told. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching our videos. If you like what you see, don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss one of our uploads. Also, head over to our website, NavajoTraditionalTeachings.com. Sign up for our email list. I can't.